As somebody who's interested in the ancient world, we're confident that you're just as intrigued by extraordinary discoveries as we are. After all, why else would you be here? Our mission is to bring you captivating stories of incredible finds from distant lands and long ago times. And this video is no exception. So without further ado, let's dive into the stories and not waste a single moment. We begin with a peculiar discovery made by archaeologists in a palace of the Sela Monarchs in Gyeongju, Korea in 2017. The team from Gyeongju National Research Institute of Cultural Heritage uncovered the remains of an 8th century toilet made of expensive granite with an oval opening in the floor, rectangular stones on both sides, and a culvert where the waste was carried away. Much of our architectural and engineering analysis of waste management systems in 8th century Korea comes solely from this site because so much of the toilet and disposal structure has survived. This wasn't the first ancient toilet discovered in South Korea, but it was the first time that a bathroom structure, toilet, and draining system have all been found at one ancient site. Archaeologists immediately theorized that it was intended for use by members of the Silla royal family and later found organic remains that have provided new insights into the diet and health of the highest echelon of Scylla society. This isn't exactly what anyone would call glamorous archaeology, but someone has to do the dirty work. The launching of the Vasa was a proud moment for King Gustav Adolf of Sweden in August 1628. It was the new flagship of his war fleet and it was expected to make a telling difference in the king's ongoing war with Poland-Lithuania. His pride didn't last very long. On its first voyage out of Stockholm, the overweight vessel sank to the bottom of the sea within 20 minutes of leaving port. It was an excruciating embarrassment for the king because a large crowd of people had gathered to wave the ship off, and they all saw it happen. The ship was found and raised in 1961 and taken to a museum where further studies have suggested that the sinking was probably the king's fault. He'd ordered 64 bronze cannons to be built for his vanity project, which made the gun deck far too heavy. He also rushed the builders along, resulting in shortcuts being taken and poor decisions being made. All these years later, it's proved to be a treasure trove for archaeologists. Over 95% of the ship's wood survived its long stint beneath the waves, and it's now the only fully preserved 17th century ship in the world. The Caves of Valeron are a fascinating complex of between 200 and 300 caves that served as granaries and are located high above a canyon in Guia, Spain. The caves are spread over eight floors and are connected by passages and steps. Historical accounts preserved from the time of the Spanish conquest described the caves as having been flanked by high looming towers and spotted with round and rectangular chambers that were dug by hand using animal bones and rocks as instruments. The original caves were formed by a volcanic eruption and hardened over centuries, providing an ideal location for storing grains and animal feed. While the granaries were primarily used to store animal feed and threshed grain, it's said that some of the larger chambers may have been used to house young women awaiting marriage. Excavations at the site have uncovered human bones and ashes, as well as pottery and other artifacts from life at the time. But it's unclear whether they belong to those responsible for guarding the granary or for those housed within it. The Caves of Valeron are protected by royal decree and were designated as a heritage site in 1978. In April 2023, archaeologists from the Cornwall Archaeological Unit conducted excavations in preparation for a housing development project in New Quay, England. What they found was a treasure trove of history, including three Bronze Age roundhouses and a Roman period settlement. The Roman house was particularly interesting as it resembled buildings found in Trithurgi Round near St. Austell in the 1970s and is of a type unique to Cornwall. On the other hand, rectangular agricultural buildings were fairly common throughout Roman Britain, but this is the first time they've been discovered in Cornwall. According to Sean Taylor, senior archaeologist at the Cornwall Archaeological Unit, the discovery of the cluster of roundhouses in such a small area is still a rare find. 
The excavations also uncovered Bronze Age Trevisker Ware pottery, a distinctive regional pottery style that originated in Cornwall and continued to be produced for almost a millennium. It's fascinating to imagine what life was like in this area from the Neolithic period onwards and how the estuary undoubtedly formed an important link with the outside world throughout prehistory. In simple terms, there are over 6,000 years of history at this site. Discovering ancient treasure can sometimes be child's play, as a group of pupils at Rizal Elementary School on Takao Island in the Philippines found out when they discovered two limestone tablets containing Bebeian characters a few years ago. The artifacts are now known as the Monreal Stones or Takao Stones. These intriguing objects, now housed in the National Museum of the Philippines, have caused much debate over their dating and authenticity, with initial examination suggesting they couldn't have been made earlier than the 17th century due to the usage of the Babayan vow deleter introduced by Spanish friars in 1621. But some experts, nonetheless, insist that they're far older. The larger stone, weighing in at 66 pounds and measuring 4.3 inches thick, 21.3 inches long and 17.3 inches wide is an irregular shaped limestone tablet, while the smaller stone is oval shaped and 2.4 inches thick, 7.9 inches long and 7.1 inches wide. The National Museum organized a special Babayan conference on December 13, 2013 to showcase the Monreal stones to the public and they remain a fascinating pair of artifacts for those interested in the history of the region. A place that arguably doesn't get as much attention from archaeologists and historians as it ought to is the Aneti Plateau in Chad, a mountainous region boasting an impressive collection of rock art dating from 5000 BCE onwards. Among these ancient treasures, a group of life-size human figures stand out for their quality and singularity. Engraved on big, vertical boulders at a site called Neola Doa, they follow a very regular pattern and are decorated with intricate geometric patterns. But what sets them apart is their abnormally wide buttocks and thighs, which have been interpreted as stetopygia. For those of you who aren't doctors, that's defined as the state of having excess tissue in those regions of the body. Considering how unusual they are, it's no wonder that these engravings have become renowned. They're thought to depict ritual scenes, possibly including dancing or singing. Take a closer look and see the geometric designs on their ears and heads, which could correspond to hairstyles or other forms of body decoration. Although it's been many years since they were first discovered, studies into these engravings are ongoing, as there may still be more to be learned from them. In Peru's Chucuito province lies the so-called Temple of Fertility a walled-off complex adorned with rows of stone phalluses. The symbology at the site isn't exactly what you'd call subtle. Though the Temple of Fertility has been studied by archaeologists and anthropologists for over half a century since it was first discovered, it's still debated whether the site was an ancient fertility clinic or a modern hoax perpetrated to make fools out of tourists. Scientists have found that the stones were placed in this order more recently than they were quarried and cut and that many were not originally positioned standing straight up, indicating a somewhat perverse opportunist possible involvement in the temple's creation. Nevertheless, local tour guides claim the temple was frequented by women trying to get pregnant. According to legend, women would climb aboard the mushroom rocks, we said rocks, and be doused in chicha, a traditional Peruvian corn beer which allegedly helped them become pregnant. With 86 phallic stones, some stretching to 5 feet tall, it's no wonder why the temple is sometimes thought to be a mockery rather than a genuine ancient temple. On the other hand, maybe we're more prudish than our ancestors were. Salihundam is a hidden gem in the southern Indian state of Andhra Pradesh. Located on top of a hill on the south bank of the Vamsahadra River, it's a historically significant Buddhist monument and a major tourist attraction. Salihundam is known for its scenic surroundings and is situated only a few miles away from Kalingspatinam and Singapuram. The village was once known as Salipetaka, which means rice emporium in Telugu. The site, discovered in 1919 by Gidigu Venkata Rama Murthy, 
features a number of Buddha stupas and a large monastic complex known as Salihundram Chaita Gruha. During excavations conducted by state authorities, four stupas, relic caskets, and architectural shrines were found, along with sculptures of Buddhist deities Marichi and Tara. The remnants were built between the 2nd and 12th centuries and reflect the different eras of Buddhism, Mahayana, Theravada, and Vajrayana. The site serves as a testament to the thriving Buddhist community in the area during the 2nd and 3rd centuries, as well as evidence of Buddhism spreading to Sumatra and other Far Eastern countries from India. It welcomes tourists, so visit Solahundram to explore this historic Buddhist site and appreciate the unique beauty of the surrounding scenery. The Guntupali Buddhist temples are an important historical site located adjacent to Jilakuragunam in India, sometimes referred to as the Guntupali Caves. As we've already said, the ruins of many Buddhist structures discovered in Andhra Pradesh serve as a testament to the unique place Andhras hold in the history of Buddhism. The Guntapali Buddhist temples, dating back to the 3rd century BCE, are significant shrines from that period. The Chaitya is one of the oldest structures, dating back to the 3rd to 2nd centuries BCE. The top of the cave has carved arches and is reminiscent of the Sudhama and Lamashiri caves in Bihar. These caves were dug on the edge of a sandstone hill and served as a residence for Buddhist monks. The caves are connected by rounded windows, and canals allow rainwater to flow into the cracks. Atop the hill, around 60 protruding stupas of various shapes, primarily round, are built on stone or brick pedestals. The ruined pavilion, once a meeting place for Buddhist monks, features four broken pillars. Recently, a Brahmalapi inscription, believed to date back to the time of Christ, was discovered in this cave complex, listing the names of the donors who paid for the work to be done. It's amazing what you can find when you clean out an old cupboard. In 2014, a box full of ancient artifacts from the Sumerian city of Ur was discovered in a Bristol University cupboard. The materials were part of archaeologist Sir Leonard Woolley's dig of the city, jointly sponsored by the British Museum and the University of Pennsylvania Museum in the 1920s and 1930s. The box was found to contain pottery, carbonized apple rings, seeds, and animal bones, with the oldest of the various materials inside it dating back 4,500 years. Index cards inside the crate cataloged where the items were found, along with unique identification numbers. While the materials had previously been described in journals, archaeologists didn't always collect organic items at the time, so the artifacts were previously thought to have been lost. The materials have since been given to the British Museum for assessment and safekeeping, it's unclear how the materials made their way to Bristol University, which wasn't involved in the original dig. At the time of the discovery, the university asked the public for its assistance in solving the mystery. Sadly, they never got the answers they were looking for. The Porta Maggiore Basilica, an underground basilica discovered in Rome in 1917 near Porta Maggiore, is associated with the Neo-Pythagorean movement a mystical Hellenistic philosophy based on the works of Pythagoras and Plato. It was a place of worship and preaching for Neo-Pythagoreans who preached aesthetism. It's the only historical site associated with this movement and is dated to the first century BCE. The basilica, which is 40 feet below street level, was constructed by the Statilius family and has three naves lined by six rock pillars and an apse. The navs are decorated with stucco images of centaurs, griffins, satyrs, and classical heroes like Paris, Orpheus, and Hercules. Titus Statilius Taurus, the head of the Statilius family who built the basilica, was accused by the Senate of addiction to magical superstitions, to which he protested his innocence before eventually taking his own life in the year 53. The structure was open to small groups of visitors in April 2015 after undergoing several years of restoration work, which included enclosing the entire basilica with a concrete shell and installing air purifiers to combat radon gas. In 1904, the discovery of the Timbaholm Great Golden Treasure, the largest prehistoric gold treasure ever found in Scandinavia at the time, made headlines. 
The treasure was found just outside Skövde, Sweden, and weighs a total of 15 pounds. It consists of two bars and 26 heavy gold spirals clustered together in two irregular chains with 10 and 16 rings, respectively. The treasure dates back to the era of the Great Migration that took place during the Scandinavian Iron Age between 375 and 550, when various tribes migrated across the European continent. That means it may have been made by Germanic, Slavic, Bulgarian, or Hungarian tribes, all of whom made a crucial impact on the historical development of Eastern Europe. Not much specific information is known about the Timbalholm Great Golden Treasure because the people who found it didn't keep detailed records, but it's been established that all parts of the treasure have gold content of between 23 and 24 carats. It's thought that the rings and ingots could be the final product of ancient gold recycling, with Roman coins often melted down and recycled at the time. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.